Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noah Roez. I'm a designer here at Adafruit and joining me every week is my very blue brother, <laughs> Pedro. What's going on everybody? I'm Pedro Roez, creative tech here at Adafruit and every week we come to share 3D printer projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. This is a show we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics and we fix things live because this is a live show. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's kick off the show with this week's coupon code. This week's coupon code is Pixel Shields. So if you want to check out anything in the Adafruit shop, this coupon code will get you 10% off. Works on everything in the shop, including 3D printers, except for things like the subscription and uh, but the gift certificates. Those are yeah. the two things where that won't work, but everything else is fair game. Adafruit.com slash free. Find out all the free deals that we have. Um, you spend a little bit more money you get more stuff. For 99 bucks or more, you get a free Permaproto half-size breadboard for orders that are, you know what, go to the website because I don't know the exact details and they change all the time. Um, so I'm gonna head on over to adafruit.com slash free, follow my own advice. And if we look over here, you can see, uh, there are, okay, that's it. We have the same deals going on, excellent. I thought we had the coasters. We did have coasters, but y'all, Gobbled them up, so thanks for that. They're very nice coasters. Yeah, very cool. All right, same day delivery is an option in New York City. So if you're in New York City and you need your, your, uh, your stuff the same day that you order it, that is an option. Check out the website for more details. CircuitPython meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. I myself like to, to listen in after the, uh, the show is published on YouTube. It's also published other places like Discord. And it happens live on the Discord channel. So hey, check out what everybody's working on, all the latest stuff in the dev. There's um, a lot of new contributors that are always awesome to hear about and learn about uh, all the projects that people are working on. So check that out. Very, very vibrant community of, of maker folks. So that's the Discord channel. It is uh, discord.gg slash Adafruit, pretty simple. You could also just search for Adafruit Discord, and I'm sure it'll show up. Yeah, we were just listed on the ah, open. Uh, I saw something uh, about that. Yeah, so there's an open source list, and like we're highlighted as 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 one, which is great. There's also a lot of help, uh, project help as well. So not just Circuit Python, but it, it's heavy on the on the Python help wanted. Go to jobs.adafruit.com um, and post your maker skills for potential uh, fish. Opportunities. Opportunities, yeah. <laughs> a lot of maker companies as well. If you're out there and you're looking for people, good people, um, it's a free service site. So just go to jobs.adafruit.com and check it out. Okay, newsletter time. There's a really big one that came out from CircuitPython. Uh, go to adafruitdaily.com to see all the different categories that we have for uh, newsletters. These are daily uh, inbox, they get sent to you inbox daily. And once a week, we have a news news newsletter. This has all the new products um, that are released every Wednesday from Lamar, Lady Ada. All right, let's start off with this week's project. Or do you want to say hello to everybody in the chat room? That's how we start it. Yeah. Shout out to everybody in the chat rooms. 
Start off with Facebook this morning. John Eric is excited about new Pixel Shield. He's intrigued. Yeah. Jump Excellent. right into that. We will. It's just a second. Everybody hanging out in YouTube and Discord. We got Andy up in here. Danny, Charles, Matable. It's over on Discord. Say what's up to everybody there. Yanni's hanging out. I'm clicking so quick to get this. Andy thing Callaway <laughs> and Mr. Certainly. Definitely tune in to the Discord for Mr. Certainly's awesome puns that <laughs> always fantastic. go on through, yeah, through the show, yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, and Charles. Yeah, hello. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's project. It is, as you said, Ooh. a NeoPixel Shield. Yeah. Following <laughs> our collaboration with Microsoft and Cartoon Network, we made Rose's shield. That thing's massive. It is 20 inches in diameter, give or take. Um, it's made from foam core, mm -hmm. which is a great name for uh, foam poster boards. <laughs> yeah. I just, I didn't know it was called foam core. So thank you, chats, for uh, letting me know what it's called. That's yeah. the slang term. It's called foam core. Very cool. So it's got one single NeoPixel strip. It's that 30 that we know and love because it's got alligator clips. So it's super easy to connect it to any board, specifically the Circuit Playground Express. It's in the middle. It's like the emblem. We'll jump over to the overhead in a little bit to check it out. Yeah, let's head on to the, to the learn guide. So go to learn.adafruit.com. You'll see the guide in all its glory and other guides too that were released this week. The homepage covers all the parts that you need to build this project. It is just a couple of things. Like we were saying, the circuit playground, got a battery pack, and that awesome NeoPixel strip. We got a couple different sizes of these, but we figured this one is a good one because it's, it's low cost. You get 30 of them, and it's a full meter long. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is the biggest you can do with the 20 by 30 inch poster board you that go. should be able to fill it up. You can of course make them smaller. We offer the templates. You can resize those as always. Yes. And then alligator clips because these are the great to have. That's hooking everything up. So yeah, these no are specifically made for classrooms or workshops where you don't want to spend a lot of resources or time yeah. uh, with soldering iron. So being able to quickly prototype, hook these up with alligator clips is a huge time saver. And they're really cheap too. Yeah, this is a huge note to, to say, like to get a kid or a student um, within five minutes of, of connecting an alligator clip to a pad and then programming it in mm -hmm. and make code, dragging and dropping, and then seeing that instant gratification, you're like, whoa, electronics is actually doable. I can do this thing. Exactly. That's yeah. a huge deal. Um, I like soldering, but man, it's really nice when you're starting out. You can just c clip this thing on. Yeah. All right. A couple of other things you're going to need, of course, are the foam core board. You just need two of these, and these are available everywhere, even grocery shops. I've seen them in. Keep talking. <laughs> Very awesome little uh, the battery's dead. triple A battery holder. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and of course, the Circuit Playground Express. It's still good? And that's it. Uh, your oh. mouse is going. It was. The battery was dying. I'll have <laughs> these here. I think it's because there's something, there's a scratch on this. Yeah. And that's what it is. All right, so where was Speaking <laughs> of how easy this is to hook up, let's go ahead and jump into the circuit diagram yeah, to yeah. show yeah, yeah. just how easy these are. Let's make it a little bigger. All right, cool. So here we go. Hey, this is nice because it actually shows how the extensions are wired up. That's mm -hmm. really useful because then you're not wondering, hey, why is why are there no extra wires here? Yeah, so it's a pretty simple connection. These are all put together using the Fritzing software. It's a free download. Um, and we have parts that we make for all of our so all of our parts. You can drag and drop these nice little um, wires to connect the components and create your own circuit diagram. It's so nice that I have to pause there just to grab the link so you guys can see all of the fritzing that is added. Yeah, it's a big endeavor. Daily yeah. to these 16 hours ago, it looks like we had the USB Type C breakout added. Oh, that's I can't dope. Wait for that uh, one. Yeah, so definitely, I saw the Eagle CAD file go uh, up too. Yeah, so definitely another one to star. Yeah, or definitely the start that one. there. Ours, so Pedro that's has the link constantly there. being added to that. All the SVG, so you can build any circuit, or if you want to uh, pry those apart, yeah, put them in Inkscape or Illustrator and yeah, modify. You these. could download the full library, but I like to just download the individual parts. Um, and you can do that by just uh, going to the repo here, search uh, for whatever you're looking for. And then um, just click on it, and then there's a download button right over here. It says download. You mm -hmm. want to use that, and then just save it. As soon as you open it in Fritzing, it'll just add it to your parts. Best library. way to, I think, did you already say the best way to yeah, find it is just best, search. Yeah, the best way is to just search. Just use the browser search. Yeah, the browser find it search. That way. Command or control F. All right, let's hit on back over to the circuit diagram. 
Um, so yeah, you can get that link there. And Simple, then, uh, good point by Mr. Certainly saying that learning the barrier to entry obstacles for someone just learning is the most important thing, which ever. is the, yes. uh, I guess, the constraints that we were given for doing all these projects. Uh, looking at how we're actually using the alligator uh, clips as extensions, you can see here how you can have them bite each other and then slip the silicone coated mm -hmm. covering over both of them so that if you do have to have them, you know, uh, oh, they will touch. <laughs> so they won't touch this yeah, way. Yeah. So that's a nice little tip there on how to use the sheathing as a cover for the connections. Uh, originally, I had two strips on there, and that was going to be a little mm. bit more difficult to do. But uh, here's one way you can do yeah. it when you're just connecting two together. Excellent. All right, now on to the code. Another code. lowered barry barrier to entry is designing all this with make code blocks. Yep, the first paragraph just shows you how to quickly set up your Circuit Player and Express with the latest make code, um, which you can download into your Circuit Playground. Mm -hmm. It's just a file that you can copy right over, over or you can edit the code inside your browser and actually use uh, Web USB to yeah. connect to the uh, Circuit Player and Express and program it that way. Mm -hmm. And so we got we learn guides and links on how to do that. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. For the series of projects, you've been breaking down all of the uh, make code blocks. You can see exactly what they're doing. I have all these noted down there. Nice little graphic you can print out, or you can have these all um, as a search text if you scroll down. Mm, there these you are go. all described again. Right, this is going to be useful for uh, the search engines and printing it as a PDF. Yeah, so that's going to be useful. Excellent. There you go. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You can go ahead and modify like um, what happens when the shield takes a hit, so you can change the sound effects for that, the animation, all that is there ready to edit if you don't, uh, if you want to experiment with different ways of doing the interactivity with the lights and the sounds. Sweet, yeah. Okay. Right, jumping into the assembly of this is the fun part. Start off with the paper cut templates. We give you the SVGs for all of these. Like I said before, you can modify these to make them smaller. Uh, just use your scale tool for that. And then uh, the other thing you're gonna need is um, just a way to construct like a circle tool. The way that I did this was taking two split rings and then having that on the uh, pencil as I'm drawing. Uh, a little circle around, and I give you all the measurements for that. You need a 16 centimeter, okay. 34, 45, and a 51 centimeter. And the reason we're doing this is so we can get that bulge on what you know what a shape for a shield is. So it's not a completely flat. You can see that it's like in steps yeah. to create that. So that's the reason why we have to cut all these out and then stack them on top of each other, and then we use hot glue to adhere those together. Note about the hot glue, it is a cordless hot glue gun. We talked about this last yeah. week, but definitely a good thing to invest into. It's only about 30 bucks for the actual glue part of that. The only thing that you're gonna have to bring uh, I love are the batteries. Thing. This is great. There's different, manuf different manufacturers that make them. This one's from mm -hmm. Black & Decker. Whatever battery um, that you might already have, see if there's one. There's one from Irobi as well. It has that heat shield and that removable nozzle, which is nice. You can find it on Amazon. Um, just type in cordless hot glue and your life will be a lot better mm -hmm. for it because it's a nice a nice uh, tool to have. Yeah. yeah. I'm laughing at the puns over here in the Discord. We got some <laughs> hot glue puns? Yeah. And alligator clip puns. That's okay. After I got all puns. those cut out, uh, it is going to take a little bit to cut these out. Yeah, how so do, you do you recommend scissors? What do you recommend you, for foam? foam you're going to want a brand new blade for whatever hobby knife you're using. Oh, yeah. So definitely have that be the first thing you do. Take that blade out because it's probably dull. Mm -hmm. You're gonna want to use a fresh some one for that. Some supervision, adult supervision. Definitely need some adult supervision for Did that. Did you cut You're yourself be, at all at all? No, I didn't. Okay. You just have to Good. work really slowly. Uh, make sure that the blade is away when, like, yeah. when you're cutting to. Uh, you know, straight cuts too. Yes, exactly. Because uh, you want to go straight down. You don't want to do a bevel for this one. Mm -hmm. Maybe you do. Uh, no, that's... you actually do. You're gonna need to do a bevel for the handles. All right, let's get onto the handle. Handle's pretty big, but uh, you can change it, I guess you want. Yeah, you're gonna need to trace out two uh, mirroring copies of this. So you can glue, hot glue these together. And then once it dries, you wanna take your hobby knife and position it around 45 degrees to slowly cut away 
uh, make it smooth because when you're holding it, you are going to feel those sharp edges if yeah. they're not beveled out. Yeah, this is super makery. I mean, you're sitting here chiseling out the, 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 the which is a fillet really to satisfying <laughs> because it is, it is in terms of and yeah, in terms of uh, printing something, you know, you always have to go back to the drawing board, redesign a thing, and yeah. then wait, you know, an hour Wait, for it yeah. to print. This is you're actually hands on. You can feel if it's uh, smooth enough or not, and re-cut yeah. uh, it if needed. Super cool. Uh, the one tip here that I have bolded, uh, should have highlighted, is do not bevel the ends of it because it is going to lose the tolerance when we oh, are slipping yeah. this into the mounts. Yeah. So this is um, so the one of the design intents was to completely be modular and disassembled. I did not bar. even mention that. So let's so. Quick, take a quick look at how it's, you can, take, you can take it apart. A lot of different reasons why. Yeah. Um, One of the, the best reason is I guess to be able to yeah. quickly get to it. Traveling. Traveling yeah. is another one. If you're going to a con or you want to take it to your class, Storage. you want to be able to break it down. The best way to do that is to figure out what pieces are modular and components. So this mm. handle he just popped it right off. You can see the ends here are long enough to fit in through these brackets that you stacked on top to make this really cool bracket, which we're going to look at. So, uh, yeah, everything is just kind of oh, constructed the with these. That's not, that's not the overhead? Oops. There it is. Yeah, so overhead, you can see, see how all of these are modular, so all of the strips can pop out like that. Mm -hmm. These are all just being held in with these little spacers that are glued into place. Let me just pop these back in like... Oh, it's got a super tight tolerance. Yeah, I'd leave it in. Um, here's the bevel that you created on the handle because we're on the handle part. And then this is where you do not want to create that bevel because this needs to maintain that squareness yeah. to fit into one of these brackets. And you have two of these brackets, one on each end. It doesn't matter where they are. It can be this way or that way. Right? That's a good point. Uh, I, the reason I did this though was to sort of try to balance the weight oh, of So there's another the... cool tip, kind of balancing the weight of the components. So you see the batteries down there. Mm -hmm. That's where I guess the CG is going to be. Yeah. And, and there's a removable, <laughs> yeah, maybe a little removable, removable thing, yeah, and it's, it's just removable. friction fit. You can do that when you're applying the hot glue. Same there's like little notes on here. What are these little notes on? Oh, your that was just pieces? for me when I was building the templates for these. So and I actually had to, tip. I had to measure all these out. You know, do yeah. markings on them. Um, it's a lot more easier for you guys. But I just built a SVG, you know, editable, printable template okay. that you can right. just lay right you on top of the it. Built. Yeah. yeah, you follow the recipe. Or if you're going to make your own recipe, you're going to have to. Yeah. Uh, make your own pieces. But these are all useful tips. We're writing little notes on what these pieces are, where they're going to go. Yeah. This side is up, this side is down. It's got a little and cover making for covers for everything, right? So the circuit playground has the cover and the battery pack have the cover. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't What's really that? need it, maybe, but hey, so it's not going to fall out as easy. Yeah, so there is um, some backlight happening with this, so you are using okay, this so as, you're a, actually, as a bounce, um, yeah. uh, you know, for diffusing the light, so it'll um, interesting. Yeah. not hit you Here's in the eye. Here's the interesting eye. thing, too. Without this backing, this effect doesn't really work. Yeah, it doesn't it look as really good. It really doesn't work. Give it a try. This backing is what allows that diffusion to happen. It's just giving that that coverage so that the, 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 the light goes forward and it's being yeah, spread out. I mean, out. you really can't see you with can't all the lights, see the lights here. here. It's kind of, yeah. So this cover, we're going to get to it in the, in the learn guide, but yeah. I'm, showing you, I'm showing it to you right now at a, at a quick oh. glance. <laughs> yeah. There's Let's definitely see. a difference when There's the lights difference. are off. <laughs> oh yeah, obviously. All right. So we're at the handle part and now we're going to build our little brackets for the handle and our holder for the circuit playground. Circuit playground is great because it's a circle, so mm -hmm. you just make a circle. Yep, have um, all the measurements for that. The diameters, you're going to need to cut that. And you, you can, of course, fudge the numbers because you do have some ability to push into the foam mm -hmm. to have it. Uh, it's like a great material. To yeah. form it into the shape, um, like for the sides that you'll need. So yeah, we're just like acrylic piece, we're just going to stack all these on top of each other to create the thickness that we're going to need okay. to, um, you know, to, to securely hold the, the handles and the CPX. Okay. And we'll just stack them as shown there. Stack them. And as I was showing before, um, to draw your circular like reference points, where you're going to put like the, the center of the gem or where you're going to glue the mounting for the CPX, you can use the uh, the home built little circular Didn't you buy tool. One? Can we look at it? I did we buy one, but it's actually use... bigger than the oh, smallest no. diameter that I was going to need. So, so it didn't even work. <laughs> no, it did work for the bigger diameters. For, what what for are the these smaller tools things. called? It it's called or? a circle tool. A circle tool. I link to it right uh, in the uh, first overview page. It's called like a roto tape, is what they call it. Oh. But for the smaller ones, this is all I needed. Yeah, this is great. So, so it's, it's just two split rings. 
and it's just being held together with string. So what I did was create a center uh, for the circle, and you can I have templates for this. You can cut this out with the little uh, circle centered in the middle, so you can mm -hmm. see where to poke this through. And this is just a uh, a bolt with nuts on it, just mm -hmm. so it can hold on to the uh, to the foam core. And all that happens is that this spins around that center there, and just put your pencil on there. And you're just going to draw on it. It's, it should be more stable when you have it in the foam core. But yeah, it's essentially all I'm doing to create that. This is great, yeah. And then all I'm doing is, it's like, yeah, I know. And then I'm just folding this into to mm. get the right measurements for that. And then that's pretty much how cool. every a lot so of people make the circles. circle tools. Yeah, was when I was searching for how to actually get it's like uh, it's too simple. Get a big you get one. a string and two slip rings. Yeah, no and we're, real that. quickly, I'll show off the um, right. What is it called? The roto yeah. roto tape yeah. tool. Since we're going to be doing more you could, foam yeah. craft projects, I'm sure it'll come in handy. But yeah. it looks like this. You can this get the is measurements. fancy. It's got machined. Oh wow, you get the measurement there. You get the measure for that, and then you just. Right. Use this tip to so insert tip it, end. stabilize it, and then just draw like that nice. to get your circular cuts. Yeah, or angles. Or I'm angles. Yeah. Do an angle. Yeah, you could definitely do that too. Seems like there's a threaded insert here. I don't know for the standoff. Yeah, so that's to hold the, um, the lead piece there mm. for the pencil. Got it for marking. Cool. Roto tape, or just two split rings and two split rings and a piece of string. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. All right, we got some circles. And then we're also going to reference where the mounts for the handles are going to be. So we'll um, mm, press still... fit those in. As you can kind of see there, I'm drawing where the. Oh, yeah, you haven't taped them those. in yet. Yeah, so don't yeah. glue them yet. Yeah, and don't, don't glue the handle to the mounts because you want to be able to take the handle out of the mounts. Right. Cool. Next up is laying out our circuits, and we're going to be drawing where we're going to add the spacers that we're going to use to hold the strips in place. So we'll mount those and then mark how many we're going to need. We're going to need about three spacers uh, for the top portion and then just one to, uh, to wedge it into place. And what this is doing is adding padding along the, uh, mm. the edge of the shield. So it'll diffuse nicely. Mm -hmm. Moving on to building the, ho the holder walls for the battery holder. Uh, Again, I positioned this on the bottom so to where, like the way you're holding it, so the weight will be distributed down to the bottom, so it doesn't like pull the shield when you're holding it. Okay. And it's just three pieces for that. I again have the templates, the sizes for that, so you can uh, glue those on. Real quick note: uh, there's an, an external on-off switch that you can plug in between the battery pack and the circuit playground. It is shown there, but we didn't so talk about that. It's you don't need it, but it does help I it uh, turn it off. I definitely use it. Because there's that. no switch on the circuit. There's a switch it's on gonna the circuit playground, but it's not an on-off switch. Yeah. And then the switch for the battery pack depends on where, it's, where it is. Mm -hmm. So let's look at it now. Super easy, JST to JST. Uh, Big switch, and it's got a real switch. nice click latch. Yeah, so you can hear that. You get a real nice. Is it waterproof too? Or something? I don't believe this one's waterproof. Yeah. Uh, but it's a it's a big button. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this whole thing is not waterproof. It's paper. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Okay. All right, so we got our battery box for our battery box. <laughs> Let's make some paints. Yeah, we'll allow that to dry, and then we'll uh, unmount all the components. So we can easily paint, mix our colors. Uh, I can't find any, any of the pinks that were usually that were used for the artwork where all the reference images are using, so I went ahead and mixed them. Yeah. Uh, I did water this down These just so that it would pinks. spread on a little bit more easier, and I was scared that it would become too opaque, uh, so I added some white in there to help mm -hmm. with the diffusion. Well, it came out good. It's a good color choice. Same thing with the green there. You're just going to have to mix your own colors. You can't find that teal mm -hmm. that um, they're using. Okay. And that should take not too long to paint There's all that three. in there. Moving on to uh, cutting out or using your vinyl cutter to this draw is... and cut these uh, spiral vine thorns. Yeah, so this is like the main detail of the sword. Like, there's nothing more detailed than this piece of it. So, um, best way to get clean cuts like this is to use a machine that can do it for you. Yeah. Vinyl cutters are not expensive if you look at it. Um, they're on every like 
Uh, Walmart, here yeah. in the States, it's a, a big box store. Craft stores all have them. There's also different ones. Um, different manufacturers make them. So you can just, just use the hobby movement. knife as well, too. Um, or hobby knife, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, printing it, though, it's pretty big, right? So uh, it's have 12 to print by 12. It and, okay, print it in 8 by 11 sheets and then tape them together is what yeah. I see a lot of cosplayers do. And, of course, you can just draw it directly onto the poster board, too. Okay. Excellent. And then the... Yeah, we're just layering these on top. And the cool effect that's happening, which I don't think I mentioned on there, is to make it look like the center gem is... Oh, you can't really see it. Uh, so let me try light. to do some lighting fixes here. I mean, you can kind of see... You can definitely see in the video, but... Let's do manual. Let's see. To make it look like it's turning around, we'll actually have this position opposite of what the cutout for the entire... Um, vine little detail is so the light is shining through the little cutout which is opposite you can kind of see it there yeah. so it looks like it, it just looks like it's rotating so you're just mounting this opposite of what the triangle underneath is I think the brightness needs to be turned up it's so bright down here it's crazy yeah. is the cover oh on? the cover is not on yeah so that's <laughs> why it's not working <laughs> Oh, we the made light a point about the cover. It's like, yo, <laughs> there's no light. Is it even oh, the light on? leaks through to the other side. There you go. So you can see a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. It's Kinda. really bright in here. <laughs> yeah. I know. The sun just came out too. <laughs> Five studio LED lights and the sun's behind us. Yeah. <laughs> cool little mistake in uh, getting a cool effect for that. Yeah. Yeah. So once you paint that on, adhere the vine, uh, the right, thorn vine right on top. Uh, just hot glue, and then the I little details. Stick. That's actually what I use for the yeah, little uh, the little stick. triangles to make up the thorn details. Yeah, that's a it's different just, uh, piece of paper, by the way. It's cardstock. They're it's just cardstock, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. And that's pretty much it. You, you can put the um, all the pieces together, and it's pretty sturdy, as you see in the video. I'm swinging it around, and yeah, the handle it holds does up. Not fall apart. Yeah. Sweet. There you go. That's this week's still removable modular new pixel shield. Put this back together. Yeah, we can turn the lights off. So for show and tell, we'll definitely have the lights off because it's it'll it's, be dark it's by then. Yeah. Right. Excellent. So again, a nice little adventure in building a modular LED uh, shield. Yay, foam core! Cool. I really like how big we're able to get this. Uh, this is actually the second iteration of this. The right. first one, um, the I had the handles a little bit smaller, but they were actually right over where the mount for the LED strip right. was, and it was messing with the diffusion. So there was, there was a dark like spot. This, there were dark spot, spots on it. So this time, I just made it a little bit bigger. This was on Lamar's suggestion as well, so we only need one strip for that. Right. And it's um, being mounted away from the NeoPixel strip, so you don't get any of that dark shadowing yeah, all, in all there. good tips to plan your prop placement mm -hmm. of the components the weight of them can you access them and then things like is light leaking how do i keep the light in there yeah and then of course got to mention a uh call back to um pearl spear weapon yes matches perfectly with it so you can go into battle yep. with both weapons half yeah. Yeah. Pearl, half rose. Actually, half like in the cartoon, when yeah. everybody starts fusing, yep. you get you get somebody special with yeah. a big, big sword. I think that's what's going to be next might, week or the week after. Yeah, the week after. Probably do Obsidian's Master Sword wow. or Great Sword. I think it's what, what it's what called. Great Sword. Yeah. Sweet. Well, if you guys want to pick up the Circuit Playground, we got it in stock right now. You can get ten percent off that with coupon code Pixel Shields. We also have the uh, the, the the LED strip. Is in stock as well, I believe. And everything's in stock. End. Amazing. Look at, this, look at this list. Everything, including the battery pack. Sweet. Very excellent. And we also have education discounts if you're an educator. Um, yep. And if you want to stock the stuff, we also do uh, distributor uh, discounts down here at the link. There's a distributor link if you are in somewhere and you're looking for Adafruit parts. Um, do a search in the distributors map, and then you can see who all the all the lovely folks around the world who carry um, Adafruit stuff. 
All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's What Are You Prototyping? What Are You? What Are You Prototyping? This is the 2.13 diagonal e ink display that this was released so cool. last week. It's got built in SRAM for uh, doing some nice buffers. It's got a micro SD card slot so you can store images and things. And it's a, a lovely little breakout. So let's take a look at uh, the uh, enclosure that we designed for it. So we wanted to make a little stand for the e-ink display. Um, we wanted to kind of prop up. This is like a two-piece design thing. You have access to the micro USB and the micro SD card, which is there. You have to pop, you know, this is a spring load. So you have to push it in to push it out. There you go. Very excellent. Uh, I haven't played with e-ink displays, but uh, it's, it, it stays on when you turn off the power because mm -hmm. this is the way the tech works. It's got a removable uh, face, pa uh, face plate, so you can take this off and take a look at the lovely silk screen here. Uh, I haven't wired it yet because I just finished printing it, um, but it is this type of design. There's another cover here in the back. This is where the uh, Adafruit feather will be. I'll probably use that feather M4. And it prints without any support material, so it just prints flat like this. This is printed up and it's at an angle. That, that there, you can see the angle there. Um, and uh, it's got four standoffs that are built in and I'm using screws because I, I figured that'd be the easiest way to do it. And uh, this doesn't really have the snap fit uh, edges, but it does have snap fit lips. So it just clicks in like that. And because of the, the odd angle here, um, it, it seems to stay put. So that's really nice. So that is a quick little project that we're gonna have. Um, one of the ideas is to, uh, to um, maybe use Adafruit IO, maybe pull some comic strips to display here, or maybe turn this into a Steven Universe project and display Steven Universe memes or something. So a nice little display. It'd be cool to have it internet connected and pull data and stuff like that and display things on your desk. So kind of going with that theme of desktop widgets and toys and things, you're gonna be seeing more desktop portals, maybe. Portals to another world. <laughs> yeah, I, I love this e-display, it's, it's like on. <laughs> what do you guys think about it? I don't know. I like this pretty cool. In there. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could throw a battery in there, but it's going to be plugged into the wall. And they'll probably use the ESP32 feather. That way it's always connected. Maybe you can display some router information or something. I don't know. I saw David Stell's work on something really cool where it's displaying um, temperature data on Ooh. the other e-ink display, the square one. Ah. It may be cool to do that. Let me know, Dave, if you want to um, print this out. This is the, uh, again, the 2.3 version, which we, I believe, have in stock right now. Let's see if I can pull up the product page. Here's the e-ink display. There it is. Learn guide is up there. Here it is. There's a wiring diagram. There's some code as well. Sunkert Python code, demo code to get a bitmap in here. So I need to get on that after the show. Right here is the learn guide. And I believe the code is over here on the side. Circuit Python code. Do not update more than once every 180 seconds or you will permanently damage the display. Oh, that's mm. a good note. Didn't miss it. Super sweet. Um, as you can see here, here's a nice demo code on how to get started, how to um, get the right libraries and um, establish the you know, connections and the pins and stuff. And uh, great, I can make a little red square, maybe do a little custom UI. Here's Blinka, you can download Blinka. Nice. That's awesome. You, what? You could just display a regular bitmap with no like Arduino.h file conversion <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> Excellent. I can't wait to do that. So that's what we're prototyping. Um, we also have this battle axe that we're working on that we'll share next week. It's back there. Let me turn it on real quick. Um, yeah, this is a battle axe. It has sound effects. This is a uh, NeoPixel strip inside the blade. It's all 3D printed. There's a NeoPixel ring inside here. I like to take this piece off. This is where the speaker lives. And the speaker, uh, if you pop this off, you can see that inside there's the Feather, the M Feather M4, and the Prop Maker Wing. The Prop Maker Wing makes it super easy to connect sound effect uh, speakers because it has a built in amp. It has an accelerometer so I can swing it around eventually and get some really cool sound effects when I swing it around. Um, it's dual extruded as well, so we have this uh, really nice transparency mixed with this dark color fi fi filament, sorry. Um, you see the blade there, there's the NeoPixel strip inside there. It's actually hollow. There's a lot going on to it. I spent a lot of time on it, but uh, <coughs> we're gonna have to save this for the next, next, next one. 
Mm. I like the sound. It sounds Super like a cool. Harley or something. Mm -hmm. Because it is it's using the fun. prop maker, we've got to mention that Catney recently updated, added That's some right. example codes, and published. That's right. Let's take a look at that. Prop real quick. Maker Wing learning guide for this. Yep, Prop Maker Wing is right here. It is actually in stock. So if you are a cosplayer maker and you're looking for a really quick way, a uh, really clean way to, to wire everything together, man, this is so great to have the Prop Maker Wing using that JST connector. Plugs right That's in. I was so able cool. to swap out different <laughs> things so fast. We'll show that off. Very uh, soon. I think, yeah, for yeah. the. Um, so check it out. Um, again, uh, Pedro's saying check out the Learn Guide. Huge shout out to Catney for getting some code open here. Uh, Circuit Python code here. This is great. So if you want to get near pixel running, here's what you need. You want audio, here's what you need. Accelerometer, 3 watt LED, and the switch. So it's all here broken up into super simple uh, things. I actually took uh, the top and the bottom, mixed them together, and now I have background looping. Uh, sound effects. I don't know how to code. <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, so this is great. A non coder like me can, can figure this stuff out. And you can read Python. It's, it's right there. And there's lots of help and stuff that you can get in the Discord community as well if you're getting stuck. But uh, hey, it's working out really well. So that's what we're working on. More. Prop Maker Week. More prop. It's like Prop Maker Season, honestly. I mean, I saw you work on the shields. Like, dude, they're going to make a battle axe. <laughs> this thing's going to be dope. God. So that's what we're working on. Uh, shouting out to a uh, really cool thing that Mike Dole is working on. Yes. So he created this awesome case for the Circuit Planner Extra Express. A nice acrylic um, it injection acrylic. molded. It's a polycarbonate. Yeah, and yeah. recently he tweeted out, uh, I think like two days ago, this really awesome um, enclosure for a 350 milliamp hour LiPo case that has the threaded inserts, the, quarter, the three fourths of Three eighths of quarter twenty, that is on the back of the Circuit Playground Express can now connect to the little battery. Excellent. This super is... easy design, but very useful in yeah. terms of the way that it's mounting and protecting your battery. So two pieces that uh, press fit together. I'm sure this is going to be uh, injection molded. It is, I believe so, going to be injection molded, and it will be sold in the Adafruit shop, and it, it will definitely help out with a lot of different projects where people want to. Yeah, so have more protection to their very sensitive batteries that can explode. Yeah, so some of the pieces you're going to need is the quarter 20 to quarter 20. This is an interesting little piece if I could get this off. Uh, no, I'm going to need a wrench or something. It's on there really tight. But what this does is allow you to hook up into the 3 eighths that's inside here. 3 eighths of quarter 20. Yep. No, just quarter 20. All right, let's look at the site for it. Here it is. Uh, you actually it. want this one. Yes. Quarter 20 to quarter 20, screw drafter. Just type in tripod in the in the search the box and everything will show up. Everything that we have that's tripod related. Mm -hmm. um, I would also pick up some, I would also pick up some of these inserts, right? As You're gonna need a bunch of these. Yeah, they yeah. always come in handy for a lot of the projects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The screw thing too. Uh, the D-ring, yeah. It's come in handy like a lot of times. Yeah. I would know. just grab them all because when you don't have them, <laughs> it's when you're going to need them. Yeah, they're in stock right now, so <laughs> get that 10% off. Yeah. The coupon code. The other thing that he did, Sorry. in addition to this uh, tripod mounted one, is he made a little strap for it too. So, oh, because, the yeah, the little slits on it, because the Circuit Playground Express case has those same slits, so you can add or make a wrist a band watch or that was the plan. put it on your body some way. You can do the same thing with this, so you can have the power right next to it. So you don't uh, have to worry about cramming it in here or anything like that. Yeah. It's on its own separate little thing. And that looks like this. Yes, it'll enclose for that. I like this because like most of my projects, um, you know, the battery is just an after, well, it's not an afterthought, but it's more like, hey, I'm already in a box, so it doesn't need to be in another box. Mm -hmm. This is gonna make it so it's more generic and it, it's, I think a little bit better because now you have extra protection if you are going to throw it in another project case. Mm -hmm. So definitely you go. need it since these are like soft little pouches. Yep, they're soft. So super cool. Um, he did we'll post. He did. Yeah. What material with colors. Yeah. That's fun. I'm figuring out. So he did tweet this out with a link to where he uploaded it. Where did I put Grab that can. link? No, it's on Thingiverse. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Let me post that in there. I did have to do a slight modification though. 
since I'm guessing this is you know designed for manufacturing for injection molding, I did it? have to add uh, just so you didn't need support materials on oh, this. Okay. And then I thickened up the inter uh, little center here just for the tolerance of the uh, three eight four twenty. Ah uh, no, I just took it in the tinker cat. It oh, was really? a lot easier to just okay. uh, punch through the uh, the sure. hole and to delete this face here because uh, I wouldn't have thought because normally when I think of Tinker Cat I think of like low res subdivisions. I tried um, doing this in like mesh, mesh, mesh mixer really quick and it did a horrible job in Shh. preserving mesh all of mixer. my my triangles. Great for making art, not for making not for, yeah. Things. It's like dude it's just one face why are you giving me Ugh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hard time mesh mixer. Gosh, it's not like you're. Anyway, look what's on the horizon. Whenever I get Check lost, I just come back to the coupon code. It always brings me back. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into this week's Shop. time lapse Tuesday. I think I have a layer. Oh, you, you got a layer? Yeah. Okay. So I've been doing a lot of Eagle CAD stuff and figuring out how to uh, map components. So what we got here is the uh, an Eagle library and showing how to map components within Eagle instead of having to go through Fusion. So when you have your library open, you literally can just double click a package, a 3D package, and then say import package. So I got the JS2 connector. This isn't playing correctly. Sorry about this, folks. The video is on the fritz. It's looping over and over again. And that's why. Here we go. Oh, man, it's so silly. All right, let's do this again. Take two. <laughs> so in the control panel, you can access your libraries and open them up. When you're in the library browser, you can select a package. Let's say I want to map some JST connectors. So I double click it, and this thing called the package generator opens up. In here, you can use their tools to generate a 3D model or pick one that you've downloaded. I have this one that I downloaded from GrabCAD. It's a JST connector that I modified. I brought, you can bring in the, uh, the step file. It's very important that it's a step file, S-T-E-P. Fusion can export those out, no problem, and most packages, CAD packages can do so. So once you bring it in, you do have to do a little bit of manual work. You have to massage it, you know, tell it it's doing good. <laughs> you're doing good, you're doing fine, massage it. No, you have to uh, rotate it and, you know, basically line it up with your footprint. Um, if you, you probably already have a footprint. If not, then uh, you're gonna have to make one. But we're not doing that in this tutorial. <laughs> we're mapping components to our existing footprints. So it's kind of tedious. Like it's actually a little bit easier in Fusion, but whatever, this is a nice way to do it. So I'm just playing around with it. And then I use the input field, which is actually nice. I wish Fusion had something like this, where you can access this, uh, this, uh, the position of the, uh, of the X, Y, and Z just by inputting the text field. And there you go. Once you have it mapped, uh, I think there's a done button somewhere. I think my camera is over it, but there's a done button probably near the bottom left-hand corner. There it is, there's the okay. So once you map it, make sure you revolve around it to make sure it's all mapped. Add a little comment and there you go. You have one 3D item mapped and now you have 50, 100 left. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of work to do, but that's one way to do it. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to do more of these things, all right? So we're coming up with a nice collection of uh, 3D models of our products and components as well. I am working on a GitHub repo to have all the individual components. So like the SD card slot, the SRAM, um, the, I think it's a 24 pin um, head, uh, connector, FPC connector. And of course the capacitors and all that stuff, but you can grab those from GrabCAD or at library IO. So there you go. This is a quick little deep dive into uh, the 3D affying Eagle CAD worlds. Yep. <clears throat> coupon code, Pixel Shield. Remember, whenever I get lost, I go back to the coupon code. <laughs> All right, where else are we going? Shop this certainly just said, coupon code is my totem. It helps me find my way home when I'm deep in code. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Go ahead and to jump into this week's community makes. Uh, we're I thought finish. we were doing Shop Talk. Oh. Are we done with it? Mm -hmm. Let me do the notes real quick. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything else listed. I think yeah. that's it. Oh, I went through it no. all. The, the moon. That's Community Makes. It is? Yeah. Oh, you're right. This, this, it's an add-on to the Community Makes, ah. right, that piece. All right, so let's take a look. Every Tuesday on the Adafruit YouTube channel and social channels, we release a time-lapse video of a design that's from the community. 
This one is not the right one. This is last week's. <laughs> I could have swore I updated this. <laughs> I know how to do it though. Here it is, videos. Please don't crash. <laughs> don't worry, it gives me time to set my I demo know. up too. <laughs> Please don't crash. So this week we did a time lapse of a moon. We 3D printed the moon. A little bit late you since this was minion? supposed to come out Sing. with the, the uh, what is it, the wolf blood supermoon? That's what we were trying to target this out. Oh, but gosh, it was, what a, <laughs> what a, <laughs> this was difficult to print. <laughs> it even still looks like it has under extrusion. Yeah, it totally did. <laughs> Man, that printer. It's a great printer. This is the Prusa. It's most because we have to get the time lapse and that definitely messes with the extrusion. You have to park the head away and let the camera take a picture. Yeah. So definitely some um, under extrusion that happens to maintain the settings for that. And the guy who designed it is Toolman? His yeah. name is Toolman? Yep. Right, so it looks like they sell a kit, uh, like the light bulb, and then oh. you just print the moon out. Cool. So is it a little teeny tiny moon? Got a little one of it. You can barely see. Yeah, you can scale it up and down. Okay. I should have shown how the illumination for this is happening, but it is a simple little coin cell, a little three millimeter LED mounted on top of foam core. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a nice little light. Yeah. Cool. Let me see if I can play with the. No. Oh, there we go. That ain't look bright pretty. enough. Okay. Cool. That's not cool, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I did cool scale one. this down by 50% and increase the horizontal expansion by 0.2 or negative 0.2 mm. just to yeah. make it thick because otherwise That's it's true. gonna yeah. be That's way a good too tip. thin. So horizontal compensation is one of those things that uh, a you lot of the slices it. are starting to have because- uh, Or shrink it. It needs to thicken out that shell. Mm -hmm. All right, well, so a single so ultimate. So, the, so I did have to use the Ultimaker to, to ultimately print this. And but you showed the- the Prusa, I saw it printing on the Prusa. Yeah, I did. That was what the Prusa printed. <laughs> the uh, gray one, which totally does not diffuse any light. So don't use gray. No. Use don't the use white. Gray, right? <laughs> use white or gl glow even, in the dark. It's funny how we look at the time lapse a million times and you don't even notice. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's gray. It's actually not the right color to use. <laughs> so here it is on Thingiverse. Uh, I can see Tool Moon is probably the. Yeah, you're right. It's called the T-Bulb, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. You know? Somebody did a remix where you could put oh, like a 16 uh, new pixel ring in there. Yeah, it's under the remixes tab. Yeah. Here it is. You can check it out. A little base that it, you can mount a new pixel ring on top of. Sweet. Well, this got me inspired to make my own. Yeah, so the Ultimaker printed a little one and then did such a good job. Uh, printed the bigger one. Right. No under extrusion, no time lapses there to mess that up and it looks awesome. That's so great. then Noel was like, hey, yep. we got a bigger one now. We're gonna need a bigger mount so we can mount a jewel on yeah. top of that. I've been meaning to make a little base for just a single NeoPixel jewel. The NeoPixel jewel has seven of these NeoPixels, the 5050s. And what's cool about this is this has the JST connector right on it. Um, it's a two piece kind of dealy here. So what I can do is I can twist this and pull it out like that. And that way you have a sort of a two piece deal going on here. These little little bumps, these little goose bumps that are on the edges of these things. And that keeps the PCB in place. So you can pull these apart and snap it out if you want. These little triangle bits here, you see how there's only three of them? They line up properly with the little, the little ridges on the top of the surface here. And that way you can actually click it in, right? You can't push, it cannot be pushed all the way down. It can be pushed up, however. So to combat that, I added these little grooves on the inside that mate with those little triangle nubs. So when I twist this, this actually gets locked into that ridge and now it cannot be pushed from the outside and it cannot be pushed from the inside. So now it's locked in there really nice. And you can still twist it and pull it back out. I've been meaning to do something like this for a while and this was the perfect project to kind of play around, experiment with different uh, feature things because it's like uh, sure you can make it bash a hammer and make it for two hours but is it scalable is it parametric is it is my timeline you know this big or is it this big <laughs> you know and so those are the little design things i considered and it's pretty clean now it's parametric i can scale this up to a big 60 ring uh, a, a smaller 24 ring or even this little jewel so let's go ahead and plug it in prop maker wing is just super awesome to so have good because now i can just plug this in and it's gonna just power on as soon as I plug in the, um, this guy here, which Ooh. is my dolls thing. 
So let's plug it into the, to the JST connector. And there you go, you have a super nice bright thing. It's running circuit Python. And uh, the, the inner diameter, oh, that looks gorgeous. The inner diameter of the, of the opening on that moon is perfectly sized for a NeoPixel jewel. So PT wanted this to be a project a couple, I don't know, last year, I think. We yeah. just never got around to it. I think the cool way to make this into a project is to add a motor to it. So it can spin it. around, yeah. yeah. Make it actually, yeah, there's some really great projects out there. Yeah. So we'll definitely. I think this is just a nice simple one. something to yeah. it. Then this is a great kind of testing bed. Now I can just throw all different types of diffusers on top to test their diffusion. Yeah. Good point. Test brightness really quick with CircuitPython. I come in there and change the colors, make a pulse or something. Mm -hmm. Very, very fun and easy. And I have sound effects in here they can throw oh, on there yeah. an acceler accelerometer on this nice little package. Built in USB battery charging. It could not get any better. This is awesome. So awesome. So great. So pick up a prop maker wing. They're in stock if you don't have one. If you're not even building props, if you're just building like anything with a NeoPixel, it's mm -hmm. so freaking convenient to yeah. just be able to. All right, I'm going to put a switch in there now. Or if you I'm need put... just the locking mechanism, um, yeah, so this is great. Lee yeah. is liking that, you can grab just these component pieces yeah, I need a as a widget. Yeah. That's a weird. Yeah. We tend to call these. Yeah, little... I'll do a layer by layer too as well because it's really nice to, to be able to scale this thing and not have to worry about you know things exactly. breaking and crashing. Really, really nice. So I spent time there. And, I, and really, this, is, this was inspired by that battle axe because I had to do a bunch of these mm -hmm. twist snap connector yeah. things. Because we don't like gluing something that's going to permanently stay glued. Uh, we're, we're, I we always need to disassemble. But it, it, you really do but you need can to disassemble. get to the components still, right? Yeah. yeah, I can totally get to the components. It's great. All right, so that's what we got. We got we're working on a lot of different things. We need to end the show. And what time is it? It's 11.52. We got a pack. If yeah. anybody will be at Disney this week, Say hi. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be there, there. Um, from Thursday to Saturday. Yeah, anytime there's no school. Yeah, we got to get out there. We got to go. Cool. All right. Um, a bunch of other stuff for the closing. Yeah, community makes real quick. Right. Uh, really cool remixes and remakes of yeah. some really cool projects. First one is this awesome lightsaber. Yeah, let's open that one. So the lightsaber is a mix, a remix, uh, posted up, or is it a remix? I so think it's so just good. a make. Yeah, so this is put by the Cheat OS X. <laughs> the Cheat, <laughs> I remember the Cheat. Um, <laughs> he said it's a, he actually dropped it right after building it. Oh no, and it cracked in the center section. Mm -hmm. He reprinted it in NGen material and Ooh. it's got more strength. Excellent. Sweet, thank you for sharing that. Let's look for the next one. Let me pull that up. Telescope adapter. This is uh, a remix of the telescope adapter customized with 3D slash. I don't know what that is. Hmm. Must be a new piece of, is, is it like, looks like it's been Legoified or? Huh. Looks like it's, uh, what do you call it? A uh, brick? Not, not Brickified? Vertex. Yeah. Um, yeah, Vertex. No. Vertex? Something like that. It's all pixelated and Minecrafty. <laughs> it's in Minecraft. Very cool. I'm not sure what the use case for that is, but hey, I saw it as like make, an and I figured I'd share it. Looks like a seven or eight uh, with the lens arrangement on the back there. Right. Okay, maybe it's a different camera. This is a update to the Type A Machines G2 fan mount. So if you're uh, oh, yeah. looking for a, an update to it, he reworked his from the ground up. Very similar original design, but has an air channel. It's smaller for allowing a bit more pressure. Ooh. So if you are in need to get a better uh, cooling, active cooling on your Type A machines, you can uh, download that remix. And this one is a really fun one. This is a remix of our unicorn horn on a dog. <laughs> this is pug, adorable. unicorn. <laughs> this is why we do the, what we do. Oh man, I remember back in 2013, that's all it was, remixes of, of the same. sculptures. <laughs> yeah, Yoda, had, Yoda had with this, Yoda uh -huh. with that. Then it was Groot for a while. Now we have Pug with the unicorn horn. Uh, Mr. Certainly. Email. Strong bad. <laughs> there you go. All right. And the last one we have, speaking of Lego. I don't know if we were speaking of Lego, but now we are speaking of Lego. Hey, this is Webcam cool. cover. Bart Simpson up on there. Nice teal color. Printed on a Dogma printer. Cool. Looks Just good. Printers. It's really good. Yeah, it looks really great. Wow. It looks like injection molded. Huh. 
and that uh, seems to work. Hey, it's a nice little thing to protect your security, your privacy, and mount Legos mount your on your computer. Yeah, it's a parametric thing. You can play with the design. <laughs> Andy Callaway good. says for the pug, unicorn, uni, unidog, unidog, <laughs> dog corn, dog dog, corn. <gasps> three Unicorn hangout dog. dog. Says uh, Yanni. Hmm. <laughs> John Park cannot unsee the pug of corn. Isn't <laughs> <laughs> that bad. We had a pug grown up. Mm -hmm. So cute. <laughs> yeah, we called him Chulo. Cholito. Yeah, it means cute. All right, well, thank you guys so much for joining us this week. Um, we have show and tell later tonight. Come and see the, the, um, the glowy shields. And that's going to be at 7.30 p.m. Please come. Share your projects with the world and Lamar and Phil. After that, at 8 p.m. is Ask an Engineer. We got new products, CircuitPython weekly news, um, and uh, lots of other great things. Maybe some sneak peek stuff. What can I spoil that's been added I'm to the store? Ooh, flat vibration switch? Ooh. Ooh. Breadboard friendly, huh? Hmm. Yay. ESP, uh, what is this? ESP8285. I think that was uh, stocked oh, last okay. night or something. In the purple. Um, oh, this is Metro. cool. Thanks. Grand, or is it Grand Central or is it Metro? I think it's just Metro. I still haven't got my hands on a, on a Grand Central yet. I got one of these today, so I'm going to have to open these up. Thank you so much. Um, whoop, whoop, wrong one. Don't forget, John Park is tomorrow at 4 p.m. Yes. Tune in to watch John Park build some stuff and code lots some stuff. stuff. He's added in the Make Code Arcade Minute. Yeah. So he's going to do a whole series on making a game from scratch with Microsoft's new arcade coding environment uh, using the same block style um, coding yes, right. stuff. So definitely check that out. He's going to build a really cool game with that. With he might be showing off some new stuff that we're prototyping for that. Mm. So definitely tune in every Thursday for John Park's workshop. All righty. That's going to be it for the show, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget Good One Code. There's also another one later tonight if you want to tune in to mm -hmm. Ask Engineer. That's going to be it. I think that's all yeah. for this week. We totally had some fails, but I just didn't have time to film. I know. <laughs> failed, failed real hard. Thank you guys so much again. We'll see you later tonight. But until then, don't forget to make a great day. See you, bye, bye folks. folks.